We continue on with chapter 5, The Voice for God. Healing is not creating, it is reparation. The Holy Spirit promotes healing by looking beyond it to what the children of God were before healing was needed and will be when they have been healed. This alteration of the time sequence should be quite familiar because it is very similar to the shift in the perception of time that the miracle introduces. The Holy Spirit is the motivation for miracle mindedness, the decision to heal the separation by letting it go. Your will is still in you because God placed it in your mind and although you can keep it asleep, you cannot obliterate it. God Himself keeps your will alive by transmitting it from His mind to yours as long as there is time. The miracle itself is a reflection of this union of will between Father and Son. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy he is the call to return with which God blessed the minds of his separated sons. This is the vocation of the mind. The mind had no calling until the separation, because before that it had only being, and would not have understood the call to right thinking. The Holy Spirit is God's answer to the separation, the means by which the atonement heals until the whole mind returns to creating. The principle of atonement and the separation began at the same time. When the ego was made, God placed in the mind the call to joy. This call is so strong that the ego always dissolves at its sound. That is why you must choose to hear one of two voices within you one you made yourself, and that one is not of God, but the other is given you by God, who asks you only to listen to it. The Holy Spirit is in you in a very literal sense. His is the voice that calls you back to where you were before, and will be again. It is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. It is the final lesson that I learned, and God's sons are equal as learners, as they are as sons. You are the kingdom of heaven. But you had let the belief in darkness enter your mind, and so you need a new light. The Holy Spirit is the radiance that you must let banish the idea of darkness. His is the glory before which dissociation falls away, and the kingdom of heaven breaks through into its own. Before the separation you did not need guidance. You knew as you will know again but as you do not know now. God does not guide because he can share only perfect knowledge. Guidance is evaluative because it implies that there is a right way and also a wrong way, one to be chosen and the other to be avoided. By choosing one, you give up the other. The choice for the Holy Spirit is the choice for God. God is not in you in a literal sense. You are part of Him. When you chose to leave Him, He gave you a voice to speak for Him, because He could no longer share His knowledge with you without hindrance. Direct communication was broken because you had made another voice. The Holy Spirit calls you both to remember and to forget. You have chosen to be in a state of opposition in which opposites are possible. As a result, there are choices you must make. In the holy state, the will is free. 
so that its creative power is unlimited and choice is meaningless. Freedom to choose is the same power as freedom to create, but its application is different. Choosing depends on a split mind. The Holy Spirit is one way of choosing. God did not leave his children comfortless, even though they chose to leave him. The voice they put in their minds was not the voice for his will, for which the Holy Spirit speaks. The voice of the Holy Spirit does not command, because it is incapable of arrogance. It does not demand, because it does not seek control. It does not overcome, because it does not attack. It merely reminds. It is compelling only because of what it reminds you of. It brings to your mind the other way, remaining quiet even in the midst of the turmoil you may make. The voice for God is always quiet because it speaks of peace. Peace is stronger than war because it heals. War is division, not increase. No one gains from strife. What profiteth a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? If you listen to the wrong voice, you have lost sight of your soul. You cannot lose it, but you cannot know it. It is therefore, quote, lost to you until you choose right. The Holy Spirit is your guide in choosing. He is in the part of your mind that always speaks for the right choice because he speaks for God. He is your remaining communication with God, which you can interrupt but cannot destroy. The Holy Spirit is the way in which God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Both heaven and earth are here in you, because the call of both is in your mind. The voice for God comes from your own altars to him. These altars are not things, these are devotions. Yet you have other devotions now. Your divided devotion has given you the two voices, and you must choose at which altar you want to serve. The call you answer now is an evaluation because it is a decision. The decision is very simple. It is made on the basis of which call is worth more to you. My mind will always be like yours, because we were created as equals. It was only my decision that gave me all power in heaven and earth. My only gift to you is to help you make the same decision. This decision is the choice to share it, because the decision itself is the decision to share. It is made by giving and is therefore the one choice that resembles true creation. I am your model for decision. By deciding for God, I showed you that this decision can be made, and that you can make it. I have assured you that the mind that decided for me is also in you, and that you can let it change you just as it changed me. This mind is unequivocal, because it hears only one voice and answers in only one way. You are the light of the world with me. Rest does not come from sleeping, but from waking. The Holy Spirit is the call to awaken and be glad. The world is very tired, because it is the idea of weariness. Our task is the joyous one of waking it to the call for God. Everyone will answer the call of the Holy Spirit, or the Sonship cannot be as one. What better vocation could there be for any part of the Kingdom than to restore it to the perfect integration that can make it whole? Hear only this 
through the Holy Spirit within you, and teach your brothers to listen as I am teaching you. When you are tempted by the wrong voice, call on me to remind you how to heal by sharing my decision and making it stronger. As we share this goal, we increase its power to attract the whole Sonship and to bring it back into the oneness in which it was created. Remember that, quote, yoke means join together, and quote, burden means message. Let us restate, my yoke is easy and my burden light, in this way. Let us join together, for my message is light. I have enjoined you to behave as I behaved, but we must respond to the same mind to do this. This mind is the Holy Spirit, whose will is for God always. He teaches you how to keep me as the model for your thought, and to behave like me as a result. The power of our joint motivation is beyond belief but not beyond accomplishment. What we can accomplish together has no limits, because the call for God is the call to the unlimited. Child of God, my message is for you to hear and give away as you answer the Holy Spirit within you. And from the workbook, Lesson 31 I am not the victim of the world I see. Today's idea is the introduction to your declaration of release. Again, the idea should be applied to both the world you see without and the world you see within. In applying the idea, we will use a form of practice which will be used more and more with changes as indicated. Generally speaking, the form includes two aspects, one in which you apply the idea on a more sustained basis, and the other consisting of frequent applications of the idea throughout the day. Two longer periods of practice with the idea for today are needed, one in the morning and one at night. Three to five minutes for each of these are recommended. During that time, look about you slowly while repeating the idea two or three times. Then close your eyes and apply the same idea to your inner world. You will escape from both together. For the inner is the cause of the outer. As you survey your inner world, merely let whatever thoughts cross your mind come into your awareness, each to be considered for a moment, and then replaced by the next. Try not to establish any kind of hierarchy among them. Watch them come and go as dispassionately as possible. Do not dwell on any one in particular, but try to let the stream move on evenly and calmly, without any special investment on your part. As you sit and quietly watch your thoughts, repeat today's idea to yourself, as often as you care to, but with no sense of hurry. In addition, Repeat the idea for today as often as possible during the day. Remind yourself that you are making a declaration of independence in the name of your own freedom. And in your freedom lies the freedom of the world. The idea for today is also a particularly useful one to use as a response to any form of temptation that may arise. It is a declaration that you will not yield to it and put yourself in bondage. 
I am not the victim of the world I see. So today's text reading was really introducing us very, very directly to the Holy Spirit, to the voice for God, as the one who is the motivation for miracle mindedness and the decision to heal the separation by letting it go. And with the workbook, we come to a declaration that I am not the victim of the world I see. The healing that the Holy Spirit sponsors, the convincing that the Comforter is offering, to the sleeping mind is the end of victimhood, in the end of the belief in victimization altogether. This is the day where we take a key idea, a key principle in accepting atonement, and we apply it on a sustained basis and also in frequent applications of this idea throughout the day. We have this beautiful idea, I am not the victim of the world I see. We have it available to use whenever temptation seems to arise in the mind. And this could be any form of temptation to feel distracted, to feel irritated and annoyed or frustrated, to feel challenged to feel hurt by the world, by the perceived world or by the thought world inside the mind. We are reminded that we must apply it to both the inner and the outer. The world you see without, and the world you see within. Because the inner world causes the outer world. The inner realm of thoughts is the cause. And this is suitable for the practice. When you feel yourself to be in a psychic conflict or a psychic war. It's still a stream of thoughts, a stream of thought forms, and remind yourself again, I am not the victim of the world I see. This includes these thoughts that seem to pass through consciousness the inner world of thought. I am not a victim of this inner world of thought, nor am I a victim of the perceptual world that seems to be outside. So today we practice, we use this idea as our torch to light the mind to shine away the darkness, whatever form that darkness takes, whatever degree of intensity the darkness seems to take, whatever direction the darkness seems to take, these things do not matter, because the light has come. I have the torch. 
I am the torch of light. I am not the victim of the world I see. <laughs>